Ramona and welcome to Ramona Interviews. And with me in the chair today is a wonderful woman. She is executive director of a community music school and she is not only going to introduce herself but she's going to tell you and we're going to discuss the great work that they're doing with kids of all ages to get them involved in music uh, in this area. Welcome, Sarah. Thank and you. And please introduce yourself. I am Sarah Smonjeski, and I have the very wonderful job of being executive director at Packachog Music School of Greater Worcester. And where is that located? We are up the hill from Holy Cross, just over the Worcester line in Auburn. In Auburn. So it's very close. Yes. And people who come to the school, students who come to the school, range from what age to what age? We cover the entire gamut from birth into retirement. Isn't that marvelous? It is, yeah. And you are the oldest? The longest serving community school of the arts in central Massachusetts. That would make you the oldest, in a way, <laughs> yes. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you, know, you have a fabulous website. So what is that website? Oh, um, Pack Music, P-A-K, packmusic.org. Dot org. And it lists all your programs, um, your hours of availability, your teachers, methods if you teach at the specific method by teacher or just method in general? A little bit. Um, we do have a Suzuki program, um, which is fairly specific in its methodology. Um, but otherwise, the approach to teaching um, is in many ways tied to the teacher that's doing the teaching. That's doing the teaching. Okay. Tell us, um, when did the school first open and what need did it fill? 1982. And at the time, that was right around when Proposition Two and a Half had first gone through. And so um, a lot, there was a lot of cutbacks being faced by the public schools. And we were founded by Packachog Church, which sits on Packachog Hill. And it was at that time that the church had some resources available and they um, were really just thinking, what could we do for the community? And with Proposition Two and a Half and all the talk about, of course, the arts are often the first thing that gets cut. Yeah. Um, they thought it might be a really nice idea to offer some kind of arts programming for local families. Mm -hmm. So when we started, it was very much a neighborhood venture. Um, and I, I'm actually the third director, um, so I wasn't there right at the beginning. Um, and since that time, it's just continued to grow. And do you, you know, you say, when you say arts, you are specific? Just to music? Um, we, we are, but we're beginning to branch out. We, our, our history is very much about music. We have a small musical theatre program for elementary age children. And we actually just started a new program this year in Shrewsbury, which will take the theatre experience further. We're now offering programs for older students in theatre. And we're also um, beginning to offer some visual arts programming. Would the theater be musical theater or just? Yes, but really with an orientation to musical theater, yes. And would you cross over? Would you have the students who are uh, learning the music help in the theater part? Well, I mean, yes, they, they actually. Be playing pieces, learning pieces that could then be? They might. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about what we do in the arts is that so much of it is individualized. So a lot of the programming really evolves based on the interests of the students and the participants. So that's a great, I mean, not only I'm sure that, pe that the students that come in that perhaps would learn uh, the violin or the cello uh, would have recitals, but I mean, here is a way that they could do something hip. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so and that's... music is hip anyway. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's old, you know, right, or what pe right. people, some, my kids call old, yeah. you know, it's that they would be able to take that and then perform while th people are performing right drama. right and, and that it sort of manifests itself in different ways at different times but in fact we you know we have a fundraising event coming up this spring our annual cabaret and that's a great illustration of that that some of the students that take private lessons will be performing in that cabaret which is a little bit more popular in its orientation whereas a lot of the private lessons are classically oriented okay. But that's the nice thing about being a community school, that you get this opportunity to have a lot of crossover, um, both in terms of ages. Some of the younger students are seeing adults struggle <laughs> the same way that they might be. And that's fair. That's, that's great, actually. Yeah. And even, you know, and some, we have some wonderful adult students who um, perform, get up in our student recital. So younger students are seeing that what it's like as an adult um, to also get nervous and perform. So that, that um, there's crossovers in all different ways in terms of programming and ages. And um, as we get to know each other, we're, we're a small school and the students get to know us as teachers very well. So it really is very much a community. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. um, engagement. Isn't that great? We um, began as a neighborhood venture, but now we're very much greater Worcester. We attract families from over 40 different communities. Um, 40? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Spanning about a 25 mile radius. We um, have a few families that come up from Northern Rhode Island and Connecticut. So I think the need is still very much the same. I think there's more awareness among families as to the value of arts in education mm -hmm. than there may have been 30 years ago. Yeah. And, and now a student would go once a week or, or can they say how? Yes, I mean most of our students do come in once a week, um, it, it, whether they're in the early childhood program or the drama or the private lessons. It's basically a once a week experience. Some of them, we also do musicianship theory classes, so some of the kids are doing a couple of different things and then they might be in two days a week. And the younger kids come in with their parents? Yes, so our early childhood program, um, which is a music together program, that's a nationally licensed um, methodology of teaching. Mm -hmm. um, they come in once a week with parent or caregiver and actually we have a lot of grandparents that come oh, with young great. children. It is, it's really nice. Okay, and then they would stay in that and, and do they enroll in that for like three months? Uh, is that how the program is we, set we up? We run three sessions each school year and many of the families, we encourage them to enroll for all three sessions. Yeah. Which what is, is Suzuki Music? Um, a specialized method um, that has its origins in Japan. Um, Shinichi Suzuki was um, a wonderful educator that developed this method. It's based upon the understanding that he realized that young children learned their language before they could read. So, right. um, and at a very early age, and he realized that, well, they should be able to learn music in a very similar manner. And so it's a very specific methodology that is actually used for all ages, but is particularly appropriate for young children. So our Suzuki program, we have a violin and a Suzuki guitar and piano 